In this video tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating how Microsoft Project can be used in order to produce a Project Gantt chart. Now, the version of Microsoft Project we're using here is 2016 Professional, and I'm actually accessing this through remote access from one of our partner colleges, Time Coast College. You may have access to this software through work. If not, then we can arrange access through the partner college. So the first thing to do when we produce our Project Gantt chart is to list all of the tasks that we need to complete. And we have a column here on the left hand side with the heading Task Name. So we're going to separate this into three types of task. We have our planning tasks. We have our implementation tasks. And we have our review tasks. Okay, so within our planning tasks, the first thing that we're going to do is review a number of design briefs. As you know from the HNC project unit, you're going to be issued with a number of design briefs, and from those design briefs, you're going to carry out an evaluation process to determine which project you intend to take forward. So first of all, we have review design briefs. Now, as this task is part of the planning process, what we can actually do is we can indent this task so that it sits within our planning task. So planning is an overarching task, and there's going to be these subtasks within that task. So if we click on task in the top menu, and here we have an option to indent task. So we're going to indent that task, review design briefs. We'll worry about the duration and start and finish times in a moment. So once we've reviewed the design briefs, we need to select a project. So we have project selection. And once we've selected our project, we're going to carry out a feasibility study. Each of these steps are discussed in the project handbook. Note that each of these tasks sit within the subset of planning, so all of these tasks have been indented. Now, as part of the feasibility study, we might want to conduct market research. And also as part of the feasibility study, we might want to do a cost-benefit analysis. Note that each of these tasks are subtasks of the feasibility study, so what we can do again is we can indent them and we'll see that they sit as part of the feasibility study. Now there's going to be a lot more steps within the planning stage, but I'm just going to include one more for the purpose of this example, and we're going to include producing a design specification. So we have design specification. Now the important thing here is the design specification isn't part of the feasibility study, but it is part of planning. So what we can do here is outdent the task so that it sits in line with feasibility study and the other two activities, reviewing design briefs and project selection. So it's only market research and the cost benefit analysis that are a subsection of the feasibility study. Let's move on and list some tasks in implementation. Now as part of implementation, we might want to carry out further research. Now once again, this research is a subtask of implementation. This might be further research to determine the types of materials to use, or to find any software that may be applicable to what we're designing. In addition, we might want to do some design sketches. We might want to do some design calculations. And we might want to do some prototyping as an example. Each of these activities or tasks are subtasks of implementation. Now also running alongside implementation, we're going to need to keep a logbook. So I'm going to add this as a new line. And the purpose of the logbook is to keep a track of all of our implementation activities. Now, because I want this to run alongside implementation, I'm actually going to outdent this, and we'll see why later on in this video. Now, finally, we have our review activities. And again, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but we're probably going to want to produce a design report. 
We may also want to include a project report, which is more a discussion of things such as our personal performance and our progress throughout the project. And as part of that project report, we may want to review the outcomes of the project. So review project outcomes and review personal performance. Now, once again, as a reminder, review project outcomes and review personal performance are subsections of the project report, so we need to indent those. Now, also, we know that the design report and the project report are all subtasks of review, so we can highlight all of those and indent them further, so they sit below our review section. Okay, so next we can begin to consider our schedule. Now let's start with our planning task right at the top. If our project's due to last 18 weeks as an example, then we might want to spend five of those weeks in the planning phase. If we refer to our Gantt chart on the right hand side, we can see that at present with the current settings, Saturday and Sunday are greyed out, meaning they're non-working days. Now we can change that, but we're going to leave that as it is by default. So we're going to specify the duration and the duration Five weeks is 25 working days, five times 25. And I'm also going to change the start date. At the moment, it's set to start today, Wednesday the 13th of November, but I'm going to change that to Monday the 18th, the coming Monday. And we can see that our Gantt chart is updated accordingly. We have a grayed out section. The reason we have that grayed out section at the moment is because we have other tasks scheduled to start today. That will all update in due course and we have our planning overarching task running for five weeks. So our first planning task then is the review of design briefs. We have the review of design briefs and we have project selection. Let's say that both of those activities need to occur in the first week. Now once again, we can set our start date for that task as Monday. And let's say we're going to spend two days reviewing design briefs. Having spent two days reviewing design briefs, we might want to spend three days on project selection. But what you'll note here is that at the moment, those two tasks are expected to run concurrently. What we actually want is we want to review the design briefs and then select the project. And this is where the next column comes in handy. It's called predecessors. Now the predecessor to task three is the task above. We have task numbers in the left hand column. We're looking at project selection task three, but the predecessor, or the thing that needs to come before that, is the review of design briefs, task two. So in the predecessor column, I can input task two. And what we'll notice on our Gantt chart is we have task one followed by task two. Now, a big chunk of our work is carrying out our feasibility study. And we can either specify how long we want this to take, or we can specify the duration of each of the subtasks. Let's say I want to spend two weeks on market research and two weeks conducting a cost benefit analysis. Two weeks is 10 days, so we have 10 days for each of those tasks. You'll note that the duration of the feasibility study is updated to 10 days to accommodate each of those activities. But in actual fact, I can't start my market research until I've completed project selection. So once again, we need to use the predecessors. The predecessor to market research, task five, is project selection, task three. Now for the purpose of illustration, we're also going to say that the cost benefit analysis occurs after market research. So task six begins once task five is completed. And we see how this is reflected on our Gantt chart on the right hand side. Now, what we can see here is that we're going to end up with a conflict. If I assign any time to my design specification, then the whole of the planning phase is going to take longer than 25 days. We can see this illustrated on our Gantt chart here. If I add any additional time to task seven, then we're going to be sitting outside task one. Now, task one will extend, 
but we only want to spend five weeks in that phase. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my market research and my cost benefit analysis side by side. So I'm actually going to remove the predecessor that we just inputted. And instead, I'm going to adjust this task by dragging it, and I'm going to drag it so that it's in line with market research. Now, the design specification is only going to be written once the feasibility study is complete. We have feasibility study is task four. So the predecessor to writing the design specification is to first finish the feasibility study. Now in terms of days for that activity, we can see that I can actually spend two weeks or 10 days on that task. So I'm going to set that to 10 days. Now we can see that all of our planning activities sit within that planning section. Okay, so let's move on to implementation. Now implementation can't start until all of our planning activities are completed. So we can't commence with our further research until we've finished writing our design specification. Therefore, the predecessor for task 10 is task seven. Now, when we place in task seven here, we'll see a couple of things happen. The first thing that we see happen is the start date of further research has been adjusted. But in doing so, the start date of implementation has also been adjusted. We haven't set any time scales on that task as yet, so we don't have a duration, but we're going to do that next. So I'm going to spend two weeks on further research. Let's call that 10 days. And we see both that task and the overarching implementation task have updated. So next, I'm going to spend 10 days completing my design sketches. However, I can't start my design sketches until I've finished my further research. So the predecessor for task 11 is task 10. And on our Gantt chart, we'll see that each of those tasks are adding on to each other. I'm also going to spend three weeks carrying out design calculations. And I can't carry out my design calculations until I've finished my design sketches. So the predecessor for task 12 is task 11. Now, once again, prototyping can't start until I've completed my design calculations. So I have a predecessor for task 13, which is task 12. And prototyping is something that's going to be done by an external company. Now, unfortunately, their lead time is 10 weeks as an example. So I need to change that to 50 working days. So we can see that the duration of our implementation has now been greatly increased. We have 25 days or five weeks in planning. We have 85 days or 17 weeks in implementation. But what we can do here is we can begin writing our design report or carrying out a review whilst the prototyping is taking place. Now, although our design is out for prototyping for 10 weeks, we can actually begin writing our design report once we've completed the design calculations. Design calculations is task 12. So the predecessor for starting our design report is task 12. What we notice here is that the start date of that activity has been updated to Monday the 10th of February, but the start time of review has not yet been updated. Now the reason for that is because we still have the project report start date set as Wednesday the 13th of November. But we can change that because we can't review our project outcomes until the results come back from our prototyping. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to set the prerequisite for prototyping, which is task 13. Let's say that once we have all of that information, reviewing the project outcomes is going to take a week or five days. And let's say reviewing our personal performance is also going to take five days and that that can't commence until we've finished reviewing the project outcomes, task 20. Okay, so we're almost there. What we need to do is we need to assign either a duration to our design report or we need to constrain it in some other way. Now, we can't finish writing our design report 
until we have our results back from prototyping. Even though we can start those two activities at the same time on Monday the 10th of February. So we have the same start time of the 10th of February and I'm going to assign the same number of days to that activity. So 50 days. And we can see that those two activities now run concurrently on our Gantt chart here and here. Okay, so just to finish, we have one more activity that we've not assigned any timescales to, and that's our logbook. Now, the logbook is linked to implementation. We keep a logbook to keep a track of our activities and our progress against our targets. So what I need to do for my logbook is I need to assign my start and end dates to be the same as implementation. So we have the 23rd of December for the start, And we have the 17th of April as the end. And once again, we can see that the writing of the logbook runs concurrently with all of the implementation tasks. Now, there's lots of other ways that Microsoft Project can be used. We can use it to assign personnel to tasks. We can use it to assign resources and funding to tasks as well. But what we're looking at here is just a basic way to present a project plan in order to determine whether we're working within expected timescales. So for this given project, we see a start date of the 18th of November, and we see an end date of the 1st of May, 2020. So we have a project duration there of somewhere around five and a half months. Naturally, if we're looking to complete the project in a shorter time scale, we'd have to look at where time can be saved. One activity that stands out here to me is the prototyping stage, which we decided to outsource to another company, and that task was going to last 10 weeks. So perhaps during the further research stage, we could identify alternative companies that could perhaps complete that in shorter timescales. So it gives us a plan, it gives us something we can work to, and it also gives us something we can adjust as we go in order to manage our time. So finally, if I minimise the scale on the right hand side, then what we should be able to see is the full life cycle of our project with all of our tasks running either concurrently, as in the case of prototyping and writing the report and writing the logbook and implementation, as well as tasks that run end on end. Up here at the start, we had reviewing the design briefs, we had project selection, and then we had our feasibility study starting. And within the feasibility study, we had our two activities or our two tasks of market research and cost benefit analysis running side by side. To finish, it's important to point out that this is by no means a comprehensive Gantt chart. All we're doing here is using this to demonstrate how project can be used to manage the life cycle of your project.